Welcome back to the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show. I'm Jordan Hamm alongside Haley Stasiak, and we're going to bring in the man behind the glass, the guy that makes all of this run, Eric Sorensen, for our Neighborhood Watch this week. Each and every week we try to go uh, focus on a different neighborhood or community within the state in the high school football community. Uh, and we've gone pretty near, we've gone near and far. We've gone mm -hmm. up north, down to Tucson, uh, and everywhere in between, but we haven't hit on Scottsdale yet. And there's a lot of interesting storylines, interesting teams there. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and bring in Eric. Um, Eric, I know that you've seen a lot of 4A powers, and it seems like, you know, Saguaro has had a stranglehold on the div division for the last half decade. Um, in terms of where Saguaro is at right now, what do you make of, of where they're at and the, the type of run that they could make here uh, over the next month? I think, guys, it's really a what you see is what you get type program. I mean, Jason Mons has the pedigree, has the team, has the experience. He also has a senior quarterback in Max Massengale that has won championships. Um, Gio Miranda, the Petty Johns, there's uh, Zach Wilson. There are enough players that have been a part of the tradition, been a part of the four straight state championships. I can't see them losing, but I will tell you, Sunrise Mountain played them really close. Mm -hmm. I think it was a three-point game earlier in the year. And they will not be intimidated by Saguaro if those two teams meet later on in the playoffs. Because a lot of times, we saw it last year in the championship game, Saguaro wins these games in the playoffs, sometimes before they even take the field, just because of the mystique and their tradition and the fact that they're just so dominant. I think psychologically, that will not be a problem with Sunrise Mountain if these two teams meet later in the playoffs. But I'd be stunned if the Sabercats don't win it all again. The crazy thing, too, about Saguaro, I think the intimidation factor that's there a lot of those guys are freshmen and sophomore this it's offensive crazy. line is huge and i i was walking up uh, when they played higley not saying that uh, you know I, I don't think higley was intimidated but i walked up and i was like holy smokes who are these guys and then i was looking and it's a a class of 2020 a class of 2021 and you know they they certainly have the size to sustain this over the next couple of years and in the spring that was one thing when i talked to jason mons that he was a little bit concerned about because there wasn't that experience but playing the two out of state games against mm -hmm. really good competition really grew those guys up and they've been like I said, pretty much rolling every team outside of Sunrise Mountain uh, in terms of the teams they've played here locally. Mm -hmm. Eric, you and I spoke with Notre Dame Prep head coach George Prelock earlier this year. He's really gotten the kids to buy into this program. They're undefeated and they're taking on Vistagron this week. What do you foresee with them in the playoffs? Seasoned and sound and disciplined team. They really don't have any sort of weakness. When you're talking about Cole Fisher and Jake Smith, two of the elite, most productive running backs in the state, they're going to be a handful. I mean, you talk about Saguaro, and Saguaro really only playing one close game. You could say the same thing about the Saints. They played, I believe it was Desert Edge. Is that right, Jordan? Earlier in the year, and it was mm -hmm. a 24-21 game. 28-21. 28-21, and, and yep. Yeah. And, and since then, they've just been rolling right along. I saw them against Chaparral that game. The final score did not indicate how dominant the Saints were over that Chaparral team. And they're one of probably four or five teams in 5A that have a chance to win it all. Obviously, Centennial is the front runner, but it wouldn't surprise me if any one of those teams listed right below Centennial made a run at the state championship. You mentioned the Chaparral Firebirds. What did you make of that? Welcome back to the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show. I'm Jordan Hamm alongside Haley Stasiak, and we're going to bring in the man behind the glass, the guy that makes all of this run, Eric Sorensen, for our Neighborhood Watch this week. Each and every week we try to go uh, focus on a different neighborhood or community within the state in the high school football community. Uh, and we've gone pretty near, we've gone near and far. We've gone mm -hmm. up north down to Tucson uh, and everywhere in between, but we haven't hit on Scottsdale yet. And there's a lot of interesting storylines, interesting teams there. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and bring in Eric. Um, Eric, I know that you've seen a lot of 4A powers and it seems like, you know, Saguaro has had a stranglehold on the div division for the last half decade. Um, in terms of where Saguaro is at right now, what do you make of, of where they're at and the, the type of run that they could make here uh, over the next month? I think, guys, it's really a what you see is what you get type program. I mean, Jason Mons 
has the pedigree, has the team, has the experience. He also has a senior quarterback in Max Massengale that has won championships. Um, Gio Miranda, the Petty Johns, there's uh, Zach Wilson. There are enough players that have been a part of the tradition, been a part of the four straight state championships. I can't see them losing, but I will tell you, Sunrise Mountain played them really close. Mm -hmm. I think it was a three-point game earlier in the year. And they will not be intimidated by Saguaro if those two teams meet later on in the playoffs. Because a lot of times, we saw it last year in the championship game, Saguaro wins these games in the playoffs, sometimes before they even take the field, just because of the mystique and their tradition and the fact that they're just so dominant. I think psychologically, that will not be a problem with Sunrise Mountain if these two teams meet later in the playoffs. But... I'd be stunned if the Sabercats don't win it all again. The crazy thing, too, about Saguaro, I think the intimidation factor that's there, a lot of those guys are freshmen and sophomore. This it's offensive crazy. line is huge. And I, I was walking up uh, when they played Higley, not saying that, uh, you know, I, I don't think Higley was intimidated, but I walked up and I was like, holy smokes, who are these guys? And then I was looking and it's a, a class of 2020, a class of 2021. And, you know, they, they certainly have the size to sustain this over the next couple of years. And in the spring, that was one thing when I talked to Jason Mons that he was a little bit concerned about because there wasn't that experience. But playing the two out-of-state games against mm -hmm. really good competition really grew those guys up. And they've been, like I said, pretty much rolling every team outside of Sunrise Mountain uh, in terms of the teams they've played here locally. Mm -hmm. Eric, you and I spoke with Notre Dame prep head coach George Prelock earlier this year. He's really gotten the kids to buy into this program. They're undefeated, and they're taking on Vistagron this week. What do you foresee with them in the playoffs? Seasoned and sound and disciplined team. They really don't have any sort of weakness. When you're talking about Cole Fisher and Jake Smith, two of the elite, most productive running backs in the state, they're going to be a handful. I mean, you talk about Saguaro, and Saguaro really only playing one close game. You could say the same thing about the Saints. They played, I believe it was Desert Edge. Is that right, Jordan? Earlier in the year, and it was mm -hmm. a 24-21 game. 28-21. 28-21, and, and yep. Yeah. And, and since then, they've just been rolling right along. I saw them against Chaparral that game. The final score did not indicate how dominant the Saints were over that Chaparral team. And they're one of probably four or five teams in 5A that have a chance to win it all. Obviously, Centennial is the front runner, but it wouldn't surprise me if any one of those teams listed right below Centennial made a run at the state championship. You mentioned the Chaparral Firebirds. What did you make of that young team, uh, Jack Miller, Tommy Christakos, and what did you make of those yellow uniforms? I love the yellow uniforms. I love the helmets that they wore against uh, Notre Dame Prep where they just said birds on the side. I thought that was really cool. You hit the nail on the head, Jordan, and you told me this before the season started. Really talented team, but a lot of young players. and. They've already won as many games this season as I believe they did last year. They're 5-4. and four. I think last year they were 5-6. and six. Uh, I think their best days are ahead of them. They should win this weekend. They're playing my alma mater, Arcadia, who's horrible. They haven't won a game yet this season. So maybe they'll get a little bit of momentum going into the playoffs. But I still think they're a year or two away from being really, really elite. Horizon and Pinnacle face off this week. What should we keep an eye on with this game? Oh, uh, the rivalry game. Um, Pinnacle is one of those teams that every year you're waiting for them to make the leap and make a deep playoff run. And they're sort of like Chaparral in a way that they have a lot of guys that have played that have been playing since their freshman, sophomore year. And maybe this is the year with Spencer Rattler and the Hatton Twins some of the other skill players that they have, they make a deep run. Horizon, I don't know what happened last week against Boulder Creek. I just saw the final score. Getting upset um, is going to knock them down a little bit in their playoff rankings. But Ty Wisdom, a really good coach. We had him on audibles earlier this year. And uh, they're really good up front, and they can run the football. Those are two things you need to make, to, to make it deep into the playoffs. So we'll see how that shakes out. You're a noted foodie. I am. You've never, no matter where I'm going, whether it's Salt Lake City, San Francisco, wherever, you have a recommendation, okay. and it's always awesome. Thank you. And You've, thank you for taking them. A lot of times I recommend restaurants, and Jordan's probably the only one that actually follows through and, and goes to them. And they're good. So I've tagged along on take, a few of those trips. Yeah, take, true. take note. Um, you've been on food TV. <laughs> food Network, yes, I have. Food Network, yes. Diners, drive-ins, and dives. I had a speaking part. My wife did not. I hold she that over her blood. head every single day. And she's in the, the food business. She is. Um, Scottsdale Food. Okay. If, if you're going to go to a game, I know this is kind of 
you know, depends on where you might be covering said game. But if you could have a pregame meal in the Scottsdale area, what, what would it be? I mean, if it's like a – they're not open around game time, but I love Butterfields right there at okay. Scottsdale and Shea, not mm -hmm. far from your – haunts Jordan mm -hmm. uh, great breakfast and if you don't get there either really really early or sort of after the weekend rush you're gonna be looking at about a 90 minute wait and the place that I really like to go that we like to go kind of under the radar a lot of old people eat there but Roaring Fork down at Scottsdale Fashion Square the ham Gr parents love Roaring great Fork. great great happy hour really good burgers cheap drinks and you could probably get out of there for about 35 or 40 bucks and don't they like ring a bell to summon everyone they do like right at four o'clock but like but sort of like with butterfields if you don't time it right you're gonna you're be waiting trouble. you're, you're gonna trouble. be waiting so. okay all right good stuff i hope everyone learned something today about the scottsdale food scene uh thanks so much to eric of course for for coming on thanks for having me on uh, it's a well it's a well-produced show so Yes, it is. Yeah, like we said, it, <laughs> we'd be in shambles if it weren't for him. So uh, we're going to go ahead and preview week 10 on the other side of this break. Keep it right here on the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show.